decision that I uh, made a few years ago. Oh. So this one we have already seen and we've already discussed, I think you've already heard about this visualization and the mantra are also two things we can do in meditation. I didn't use them today. If we use visualization, it's important that we do not force ourselves and then allow the image to gradually grow clearer. And these are some uh, review of some principles. There's also a mantra. I think you already heard about the mantra, right? Yes. Yes. So there's a mantra which is often used in meditations and the Makaya tradition. It's called Samma Alahang. It's actually used in many uh, uh, Thai Buddhist uh, meditation traditions. And it's just a combination of two words. Samma means uh, right or perfect. And Arahang means enlightened. They are used for the Buddha, but they are also used for a state of mind in general. And it is a, the state of mind associated with enlightenment. So it's a beautiful, nice word, and we can repeat it because it's just the right length. Um, we can imagine it coming from the center. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this. I just would like to point out a few things. These are some things we might consider if we are integrating meditation into our daily lives. Now, first, may I ask you, uh, how is your practice of meditation in your, in your daily life? Do you prefer a certain time of the day or is that different every day? Anyone, <laughs> feel free to respond. But perhaps uh, you are more like a freestyle. You like to meditate when you are in the mood. That's also possible. Yeah. But these are some pointers that you might think of when you're integrating uh, mindfulness and meditation into your daily life. Actually, this says mindfulness, but I'm, I, I, I mean, with that, I mean actually meditation. So the first one is, of course, your home. The second one is workplace, but the first and the two are basically the same at this point in time. <laughs> Many people are working at home and if you're retired, then your home also becomes a sort of workplace sometimes. <laughs> um, so your home is important in the sense that if we want to have a, a sense of meditating, I mean, if we want to build this atmosphere of meditation, then we might uh, think of uh, finding a place for us to meditate, a corner in our home or perhaps even a room. There's a tradition in Thailand to have a place, a room, a separate room for chanting and meditation. Of course, this is mostly people with a bit, uh, traditionally this, this is not for the poor people, but in generally um, it's kind of an, old, an ancient tradition that people have some sort of corner or some place uh, where they do the chanting and meditation. Of course, um, this might not exactly look the same for every person. Some people might want to have a Buddha image, but other people might want to have a picture of a lotus or some other picture that is peaceful and helpful. Or maybe even a picture of a person that inspires you. So you have the feeling this little corner in my home this little room in my home is helping me to be more uh, aware that meditation is so important and that we are reminded to meditate. We actually just want to sit there. It's a good inviting corner in our house. So when we have a corner like that, it's easy to meditate. The third and the fourth thing is about conversations and the people who we associate with. So the people that we associate with in our lives also affect our interest in meditation. As we are here today, we're talking about meditation, we're meeting up in a group. 
And uh, after I've, um, I've finished this uh, presentation, you will notice that I will keep it running so that anyone who wants to, um, who wants to talk a little bit more, then we can also discuss because it's important that we have uh, some uh, possibility to converse and talk with others about meditation. This will also inspire us and give us some uh, wisdom to overcome any problems that we might face in meditation. So those are two things that also are very important in integrating meditation into our daily lives. Then the last three items, uh, just uh, I forgot to tell you that these seven items are from the ancient uh, Buddhist text about meditation. It's called the Visuddhimakkha. It's a medieval text from India and then later uh, written down in Sri Lanka. And it's a, a text about Buddhist meditation. And these seven items are called the seven suitables. So um, the last three are about our health, food and climate and exercise. These three we might be mindful of because they very much affect our meditation. Food is not only about what kind of food we eat, but also when we eat it. Before we have meditation, it may sometimes be helpful to have some meal before we meditate, but for some people that leads to feeling sluggish or feeling sleepy. So it may be better to have a meal after meditation. Also drinking water, getting hydrated is important as well. And this of course connects with climate. If we are uh, in meditation, if we have a good climate that may refer to the weather in general, but it may also refer to having good ventilation in your room where you meditate. And if you have a heater like myself here in the little fresh and cold Netherlands, then we might also have to think about that, our, that we are not getting dehydrated because of the heater. These are some things that we are sometimes not so mindful of in the West, but this is actually important because our environment affects our meditation. Then um, last of all, exercise and posture are also important in meditation. If we exercise often, our posture will be better, will be easier to sit straight. We might even consider sitting on the floor sometimes for some time. We don't always have to do that for long though. We can also switch between chair and floor. But if we are uh, meditating on a chair or on a floor, it's also important to have regular exercise, whether you're doing some yoga, qigong, or fitness, or whatever you prefer. But uh, even during this COVID crisis, exercise is even more important to make sure that we compensate for not moving much, not getting outside, or that we in that way improve our immune system so we are not getting ill. So exercise is very important for our meditation as well. If you go on a retreat, which you may have done sometimes, you might find that exercise is, uh, is always, uh, there's always a bit of exercise every day in uh, most retreats because uh, that way your meditation will also be improved. So these are some helpful pointers that I'd just like to go through. And, uh, but wherever you, whenever you meditate, you sh should always, um, just going through this a little quicker. Whatever we do in meditation, it's important that we uh, do not, um, that we point, that we choose a certain time of the day that we are, that is helpful for us to meditate the morning, the afternoon or the evening. Many people like to meditate in the early morning when the sun has not r risen yet, but it can also be helpful to meditate after breakfast. I've heard a few people who like to meditate after breakfast. 
Then some people like to meditate before they go asleep, after they brought their children or grandchildren. They've, uh, I mean, they brought their children or grandchildren to bed. Then you go and sleep. And before you go to sleep, then you meditate. This is also a good moment. People who have their own business or people who are retired might want to meditate in the afternoon. This is also very uh, good, especially uh, some people who prefer to meditate after lunch, but this is not for everyone. So these are some ideas about how to integrate meditation in your daily life. People often ask me, how much time should I spend on meditation on a day? And I say, well, that's up to you. It is, there's no golden rule for that. Though there used to be a guideline in our temple that we used to teach that it's good to meditate half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening. But these days I find that most teachers in our tradition just say any number of minutes will be very good. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, if you have some, can spare some time every day, it's very good. To, your meditation will gradually develop and it will be very... Uh, it's like they say, if you build up a good habit, the good habit starts to take care of you. And it will be, in the beginning, it may be a form of discipline, but in the end, the meditation itself will be so enriching, or what do you call it, uh, it will be so uh, helpful that you will not have to force yourself that much to meditate. So these are some ideas that I have about integrating meditation in your daily life. Uh, maybe somebody would like to respond or you you can share whether you can whether this resonates with your life <laughs>